Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue on my discussion about the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. And remember that in the previous video we talked about the details of the Bohr model. Um, there are several different things that he gave, but primarily the idea is that in the Bohr model the electron is um, fix, uh, it's, it's can only be found at a fixed location, at a specific location, and uh, the electron is forbidden to be found at any other location except for those locations which he called the orbits. So we generally call those locations the Bohr orbits or we call them electron energy levels. Okay. For the hydrogen atom in particular because hydrogen atom only has one proton and one electron you have this one electron which can, buy, can be found in this in this n equals 1 orbit, n equals 2, n equals 3 or higher orbits. Remember that n equals infinity mean that the electron at that point is ionized or it's completely removed from the um, atom, from the hydrogen atom. Now, the energy of the electron, according to Bohr, uh, for each orbit is given by this equation E sub n, which is E energy of a particular orbit, uh, is equal to negative RH over 1 over n squared. Uh, times 1 over n squared. Remember that in the end of the last video I was kind of discussing this concept of Rh having two different values. Rh is the Rydberg constant and remember Rydberg was the guy who originally proposed an equation to try to match the wavelength in the um, hydrogen atom uh, emission spectrum to a mathematical equation. He was able to derive an equation that looks like this but Bohr gave meaning to this equation so what he's saying is that the um, Rh in this case would have the following value uh, 2.18 uh, times 10 to the minus 18 joules okay now this is important to remember because in the previous um, one of you know the previous discussion when we talk about Rh we used this value for Rh but remember that when we're using this value of Rh the equation looks like this so on the left side of the equation you have 1 over lambda so it's important to remember that when if we you if you're using the Rydberg equation where the left side has one over lambda, this is something called a wave number. If you have one over lambda on the left side, then the Rydberg equation you would use, the Rydberg constant you would use would be this value right here, 1097.3700 per meter. However, if you are using um, the uh, equation, the Rydberg constant, in the form where the left side of the equation has an energy term, an actual energy term, then the Rydberg equation has to be given the unit of energy, which is 2.18 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. You can convert from this to that. It's not very difficult to do so. And we will talk about that at the end of this uh, topic. But it's, uh, it's important to use the appropriate Rydberg constant and you, you know which one to use depending on what you have on the left side of the equation. If you have energy, you use this one. If you have 1 over wavelength, then you're going to use this one. So you remember that the units just have to match okay, with the left side. Now, Bohr is uh, saying that the equation for the energy of the electron at a given orbit is this value right here, which is negative Rh. 1 over n square and so you can calculate then how much energy an electron has at a given at a given orbit okay now he's saying it's the following if you want to calculate the change in energy as the electron goes from one orbit to the next orbit either from low to high or from high to low then you can just calculate if you want to calculate delta E n, which is the delta E corresponding to the transition of the electron from one shell to the other shell, or from one orbit to the other orbit, by the word, by by the way, the word shell is often also used in this context to represent the orbit. Then what you need to do, if you want to calculate that energy of the electronic transition, you just need to take the energy of the final orbit minus the energy of the initial orbit, and remember that each orbit, the energy of each orbit is given by this, so it's really just negative Rh 1 over n final squared minus negative Rh 1 over n initial squared. If I uh, factor out the negative Rh, then my equation just becomes negative Rh 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. Now, compare this to the Rydberg equation that Rydberg originally proposed. Okay, I'm going to bring up that slide again. Compare this look at this equation. 
doesn't look you know exactly uh identical with with the, you know a couple of things missing there there's the negative sign in the Bohr model and there's the e of course here but you'll see that that's really just a, a matter of defining uh, you know where the where the zero level of the energy is but it's really the same equation so that's why in the Bohr model okay he's saying that you're using the Rydberg equation to calculate the energy of the electron now that's really the difference between just the Rydberg equation alone and then the Bohr model which uses the Rydberg equation what Bohr was able to do is to interpret the meaning of these numbers right here the n1 the n2 and the Rydberg constant itself okay remember that Rydberg uh, what Rydberg was able to do is basically uh, fit a data he was able to find an equation that fits the data that um, is presented by this emission spectrum but he could not figure out what the meaning of these numbers are okay Bohr was able to do that using his model so going back to this this slide right here where um, with the Bohr model so basically what he was able to do was he was able to determine that these two numbers these whole numbers here correspond to the orbit of the electron okay so when we say that we want the uh, electron to uh, when the electron transition correspond to the emission of a light it has to go from a higher energy to a lower energy for that to happen right and that's why the final number remember we said before that the final number is always let's say two the the initial number has to be a bigger number right has to be three four and so on and that makes sense now in the context of the Bohr model because in order to get light being emitted the energy of the electron uh, n n the the transition has to release energy okay that energy goes to form a photon and that photon is what's being generated let me put up this equation right here this part of the equation is not something you need to memorize at all okay so I want to emphasize that at this point so you don't need to know anything about this what uh, whatsoever but I do want you to kind of appreciate this fact right here which is written at the bottom that what Bohr was able to do was really quite um, uh, amazing in the sense that he he used classical mechanics okay with the only assumption that he made is that the electron is a super stable uh, particle where it can circle around the nucleus without falling into the nucleus that was his main assumption now he couldn't explain why that has to be true but he knows that if I make that assumption then all the equations work out okay so he said that if you assume that the electron is this super stable particle he then used Newtonian mechanics to derive uh, an equation uh, for the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom and what he found was that he was able to relate this experimental constant called the Ripper constant to a bunch of fundamental constants M here is the mass of the electron E is the fundamental charge of the electron uh, H is Planck's constant 8 pi of course that's just constants and then E naught is also another fitting constant that people use it's called the permittivity of the vacuum so all of these are constants now remember that the, the, this is kind of the beauty of, of uh, Bohr's uh, discovery here because Rydberg dis discovered this constant but he didn't know why why they have to have that value Bohr was able to take that constant and kind of deconstruct it into all of these different components that uh, all come from the electron and its interaction with light okay so this is kind of the the importance of the Bohr model okay the when he said that the energy of the electron at a, in a in a given uh, in a given shell or in a given orbit is equal to this he's really saying that it's equal to 1 over n squared times all of these things which are all properties of the electron or light okay um, and that's kind of you know that's that's the power of the the Bohr equation was he derived this using theory but he was able to match this with the experimentally measured Rydberg constant okay so again let's let's again you know emphasize exactly how this works in terms of uh, light that we see from the atomic emission spectrum okay so what happens is if you um, want the electron to jump from the ground state to an excited state then what you need to do is you need to either shine light on that electron so the electron gets energy if the electron gets energy then it would jump 
from the ground state to a higher energy level. So for example, in this case, it says atomic excitation. The electron goes from n equals 1, the closest one to the nucleus, to n equals 2, the first excited state. Now, that electron is not going to stay there forever, so at some point it has to drop back down to the ground state. When it drops back down to the ground state, that's when it emits light. That light has a particular wavelength associated with it, and we can calculate that wavelength. How? Remember, we have this equation, delta E equals negative RH, 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. This gives us the energy that the electron loses or gains, depending on what we're talking about. But let's say we're talking about um, d excitation we're talking about coming back down to the ground state then we're talking about the energy that the electron loses okay or releases now the electron releases that energy not just as heat but it's releasing this in the form of a photon the energy of a photon is equal to h nu so in other words this number which is coming from the electron has to equal to this number which comes from the photon so the electron trans you know transfers all that energy to a photon the photon has a certain frequency but we can also calculate wavelength because frequency and wavelength is related by c over lambda so in other words this energy is also equal to this hc over lambda and if we rearrange the equation we can then solve for lambda which corresponds to the wavelength of the emission line and that's how you can use that equation to correlate now this yellow light corresponds to a specific transition, a transition from, let's say, n equals some number to n equals a lower number, okay? This blue light corresponds to yet another transition. So you understand what I'm saying here is that there is, there is um, each of this line corresponds to a specific transition that the electron makes in the atom. Uh, it goes from one high level to one lower orbit, and that generates a particular line that you observe, and you can calculate that value of the wavelength of that line.